Hello everybody, welcome back to AP Human Geography. We're continuing all our culture unit. Uh, today's topic is race versus ethnicity. And it's important to note the difference, right? Race is considered to be a biological classification. It can sometimes be determined by the physical appearance of an individual. And it's important to note that one member of a race cannot simply join another race, right? Versus ethnicity is considered to be more of your cultural identity, right? Can sometimes be determined by the way that you dress, okay? And a member of one ethnicity can join a member of another ethnicity, okay? And so, uh, ethnicity versus race, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's take a look at our our uh, outline today. Um, we have no warm up. What? What? Yeah. All right. But we are going to go through a a, a PowerPoint. Um, the PowerPoint is race versus ethnicity because that's today's topic. And then you're going to watch a TED talk about Thandi Newton. Okay. This is uh, an actress. She's actually on Westworld. If you guys watch uh, Westworld, great flick about future. Uh, culture and future populations. It's on HBO, so you do have to pay for it, but I highly recommend it. Anyway, we're getting off the topic. Uh, let's dive into our content, right? Race versus ethnicity, right? Specifically in culture. So we must define, right, race versus ethnicity. That little chart earlier hopefully helped a little bit. But race is the actual physical appearance, right, resulting in people. And it's classified by things like eye color, right, your actual physical size, right, your physical features, okay, versus ethnicity are common connections based on your cultural or historical origins, right? And so the example I want to use is my race is uh, Caucasian or white, and my ethnicity, right? This could be um, this could be like Catholic or Christian, or um, maybe somebody outside of the United States, right? This could be like um, I'm thinking like an Asian person, right? And they could be you know they could be a member of the Buddhist um, uh, religion, right? So Ethnicity is more cultural and historical. Race is your actual physical appearance. Okay. And we got a map right here of uh, the most commonly reported ancestry, right? And so this is race, right? This isn't uh, ethnicity. This is actual race. Uh, most common reported ancestry, this is for the United States. So, uh, we're in human geography. What sort of spatial trends do you see, right? Is there a certain landscape that maybe uh, a certain race might prefer, okay? Or maybe they were uh, put into that landscape. Uh, for example, African American, right? A large population down here, probably placed here by cultural uh, relocation, right? Versus diffusion. Uh, what do we have here in the middle? A lot of what we like to call American. Okay, that's interesting. We have French and French Canadian. We have some German, some Italian, some English, right? The first colonists came to, were from England, came and they settled in, in Plymouth, right? Uh, we also have some Mexican or Hispanics, right? But then there's also Portuguese, uh, American Indian, right? So, um, this is outlining the different races in the United States, right? Defining race and ethnicity. Nice. So if we move on to talking about the impact of these two words, right? Race is more of a, of a, a thing that's developed by society, right? A societal concept, okay? Versus ethnicity re uh, led to the rise of this, this otherness factor, okay? Um... And ethnicity was once used as justification for social inequalities. Because of that social inequalities, those inequalities, it led to tight-knit communities um, and, and some conflict among, among different groups. Okay. So is society, is, it, is the society in your 
in your state, in your country, right? What is the makeup of your society? Is it homogenous, right? Meaning only including members of one group? Or is it heterogeneous, okay, which includes members from more than one group? If it's homogenous, homogeneous, right, usually uh, they, the individuals or the population is very resistant to outsiders and very resistant to change. Versus if it's heterogeneous, right, it might result in some sort of cultural integration or cultural conflict. Okay, so that's a big part of culture, right? What is the societal makeup of the, of the state, of the country? Okay, and of course, um, we have racial divisions within the United States. Uh, it's still a main way that people identify themselves in the United States. Uh, this... This horrible sign says Japs keep moving. This is a white man's neighborhood, right? And so a lot of these uh, these conflicts result in official or unofficial segregation, which uh, promotes the idea that you have ethnic neighborhoods or certain uh, parts of a city that are dominated by certain races, right? Or certain ethnicities, okay? Uh, a big thing... This is a map of of Man of um, New York, right? Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, the Bronx, and a big big part of this idea of ethnic migration is relating to chain migration, right? High concentrations of people form communities, and and they maintain their identity, right? They maintain their ethnicity, and they actually end up changing the identity of the city. Right, so an example is the Irish people in Boston. Right, look at this: the Celtics, right, um, the basketball team, right. That could be a a uh, related to the fact that there were lots of Irish people in Boston. Okay, could be another thing. But chain migration, right, uh, leads to a lot of these uh, ethnic neighborhoods, or or if you want to refer to them as ghettos, right, areas where minorities live. Um, and a lot of the time, these ethnicities uh, or these, these races, they have um, some sort of economic or political pressure because they're not created as equal, which is very unfortunate. Okay, so look at the, look at the map over here. Very interesting, right? So I, if you received this on an FRQ, think about the explanation that, would, that you would give for why they are so separate. Okay, definitely could see this on the AP exam, All right? And so we, I, I alluded to the fact that there is sometimes a uh, conflict based on economic or political tension, right? And these these tensions are often uh, directed towards different races or ethnicities, right? Um, grocery cart and harness for sale. Okay, in gourd order, and one chestnut horse. <laughs> Eight years old, excellent saddle horse, can be ridden by a lady. Also, young, may, young man wanted, from 16 to 18 years old, able to ride. And here's the thing, no Irish need apply, okay? So here's that conflict, here's that economic conflict, right? And so much like we saw... Uh, on the last activity with religious conflict, there's also ethnic or racial conflict. But of course, uh, over time, uh, racial and ethnic tensions tend to alleviate, and alleviate means they, they come to, they get better. They sometimes come to a compromise. And this is sometimes years after the conflict, right? So I'm mean, thinking, for example, uh, uh, black suffrage or the writing votes that were given to black people, right? They eventually, um, eventually led to integration of different cultural trends, right? We were able to include, as sad as it was, uh, we were not including black people in, in the vote, right? Because we thought that white people were superior, uh, which is a horrible concept. Uh, but eventually, right, we came to a compromise. And so I think that's the big point is... Um, as soon as you can expose what these conflicts are and how you can change them, you can come to a compromise, okay? So this relates to culture because race and ethnicity have a lot to do with 
well, how am I going to act around certain people, right? How do I, uh, what do I do in my every day-to-day -day life? What are my interactions like with different people? Okay, so that's our content for today, right? Now we're going to look at this Thandie Newton TED Talk, this, uh, this assignment, all right? So uh, this is what the web page looks like, or the, the assignment looks like, right? You can load your YouTube video One of the great to take a look at it. And of course, it's got an advertisement. Is knowing Three, enough about a subject One. to think you're right. Okay. So this is our, our TED Talk, Embracing Otherness and Embracing Myself. Okay, powerful stuff by good old Thandy. All right, so take a look at um, this TED Talk. Embracing, other Embracing otherness. otherness. Okay, there she goes. And then answer some questions. Your thought questions are, right, where does the idea of our self originate? Why is it impossible to keep intact? Uh, what impact does this, the society have on the creation of the self? What is oneness? Okay. What is the importance of the connection? Right, and this is your reflection question. This should be definitely more than one sentence. What is the main advantage of growing up in a multicultural environment for the formulation of yourself? Okay, so some, some great stuff about race and ethnicity, some things about culture, right? right? Keep in mind, okay, that you should know the difference. And, yeah, email me if you guys have any questions. Uh, smooth sailing, of course, and until next time, we'll see ya.